Hello and welcome to Sumi's Klingon Costume Build. Now keep in mind that this is more of my build and less of a tutorial. Over the years there have been many mighty Klingon warriors, some well known and some well a little less well known and yet others, other mighty Klingon warriors, well you get the idea. But most of them, if not all of them, will have to make room for one of the mightiest Klingon warriors of them all. Who is that, you might ask? Well, it's Klingon Sumi. Yes, that's right, Klingon Sumi. This is the tale of my Sumi's Klingon costume build. So I went down to the fabric mart and this is the stuff that I got here. So I'm just gonna kind of show, show it to you, I guess. You know, so that so that if you, you decide to make a, your own Klingon outfit, you could, uh, you know, look at this stuff and get your ideas. The material here is black penny velvet. I got about a yard of this. You know, I use this for other things. Um, this here is, um, you know, some vinyl. This is a yard of black vinyl, actually. And this is what I'm going to use for the boots. This is some gray penny velvet. This is going to be used for the pants and also some some of the underpinning for the main uh, t-shirt part of the uh, the of the uniform. This is some gray stretchy material, and this will also be used for the pants and and most of the undershirt itself. And um, this is going to be the main uh, material here. This gray vinyl. It's a little bit whiter than the uh, than the vinyl that you might see in the in the picture or I guess what the Klingons use but um you know it's cheaper I mean this was like six dollars a yard and I got two yards of this compared to the um I guess the more expensive grayer looking stuff which was about nine dollars a yard so altogether this cost me around seventy dollars you know which is about the same as if you bought like a pre-made outfit but you know like I guess making it myself is just uh, my style, I guess. Anyhow, I'm gonna get started. So first, I'm gonna start with the shoes. Um, I have a pair of boots here that are pretty good, but um, they just don't fit. They're kind of too small for me. So what I'm gonna try to do is make some uh, boots out of like shoes. These are some old old work shoes that I I don't know. The bottoms are kind of coming loose. You know, I was gonna I was gonna repair them with some shoe glue. But I never got around to it, so I'm just gonna make these into some Klingon boots. Anyways, here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some slippers, these old slippers that I got, and uh, well, you know I've been doing something with them, pretty dirty, and I'm gonna kind of put this on top of here to get kind of the height, you know, because you, you notice like Klingon boots are kind of like higher than normal boots somehow. I, mean, I think they're just gardening boots mostly, but I'm just gonna try to do my own thing here. Now if we cut to the um, the generic looking Klingon shoes, then you can see that at the top there's like three lines and some kind of lines going like, I guess vertically underneath them. But if we look at the Star Trek um, book and we look at Christopher Lloyd's outfit for Star Trek Three, we, we notice that the shoes um, have about five lines on them. I don't know, it's kind of hard to see here. Yeah, five. And then there's like kind of a, a grate of a, of a fabric, then another five lines, and there's kind of a cut, a different type of cut down here. So we, we kind of want to emulate that a little bit, or at least I want to try to do that. And this is kind of a good picture of I guess the back of the the shoe sort of the shoes by the way they look they look like they're at the knees like they're they're knee high here you know um whereas I don't know if I want to go that high because it's harder to move around that way and if I'm going to a convention you know I want to be I want to walk easier so anyways I I drew up this little picture here of kind of how the shoe looks like and I try to break it down into sections that I can sew together. Now this is a very complicated type of stitch, so um, you're gonna need a sewing machine like I have one here. Um, you know, a fairly good one if you wanna do this type of stitching. Okay, so to get that kind of, I guess, fluffier look or whatever, you know, to, to really do like kind of a good, 
I don't know what they call this like to, to stitch across here and get, I guess they call it a tuck and roll or whatever, you know, um, I decided I'd, I'd take this vinyl and put, um, like this, uh, backing, this type of, um, you know, uh, I guess foamy, I don't know, soft backing, and then I got like a scrap of fabric, I just had some black fabric lying around, so, uh, I guess the process here is, is that I'm gonna have this like this and then stitch, stitch it along this way, and then kind of, you know, sew it together with this other part once this is all sewn. Well, I guess, I guess you'll see what I mean, but anyways, I'm just, I just decided to do that. I mean, I wasn't going to, but you know, I mean, I have the materials, so why not? Okay, so this is kind of how I do this. I made a stitch here and then I, you know, kind of, kind of fold this over here a little bit like like about this this much you know and then I just um, kind of gather up the fabric and make sure the the bottom fabric is um, you know like tight and then pretty much I just um, clamper the sewing machine down to where, where, um, where I feel that the stitch meets sort of and then I just kind of sew so uh, start sewing. So I was stitching and um, this is kind of how it turned out. It's um, you know something and um, well this is how much was left over you know out of a strip about like this long you know so I'm just gonna add like a little extra like you know, cut off some more of this stuff and just add this, you know, in this area here and just continue, you know, to, to fill up this, uh, this space here. Uh, because, you know, I kind of miscalculated this part. I ended up using more vinyl than I thought I would. But yeah, so this, you know, is kind of like the top of the boot. That'll go kind of around like this. And, you know, to, to make this uh, part like, I guess, for it to lay like how, how it does instead of like folding over um, I took a needle and I sewed each one of these down like this so that when I stitch across here and apply this part it'll you know it'll, it'll lay down how, how I want it to so I attached another um, fabric onto the bottom here to give the boot some length upwards I guess so yeah that kind of looks like like this I guess and you know it's gonna be kind of sewn together like this sort of you know and then um and then the shoe is gonna go like underneath here sort of you know to make to make kind of a boot action happening there so before I do that though I'm gonna <clears throat> like get some penny velvet here some I'm gonna use gray and I'm gonna kind of like cut a section and put it into here to create like a liner for the foot. Uh, now I'm gonna take this shoe glue and um, put this on the bottom of the, of the shoe, try to fix this. So I glued this uh, to the bottom, but um, you know glue doesn't last very long you know sometimes so what I'm also gonna do to secure this better is I'm gonna use some wood screws so I'm just gonna you know get get kinda the right size and screw this in, into this part I, I I don't know you know like I don't want it to be too long where I'll go right through to my to my foot while I'm walking you know can that, that'd be bad but anyways I'm gonna do that now So I got some uh, wood screws here and here and about four on the bottom. So, you know, I, I guess that'll be, you know, got to make sure, though, that they're not poking through, you know. That'd be horrible. But yeah, you know, it's not too bad. Okay, the way I'm going to make the pants is that I already have a pair of pants here. 
and these are a little too big for me but I'm just gonna make the cuts a little smaller like you can see that this area has a cut here and a cut up there and I'm just gonna follow this pattern and cut out cut it out on this piece of cloth and make the pants and because I'm I'm not making shorts really I'm making longer pants I'm just gonna extend these out a little bit more and uh, that's what I'm gonna do for this so I could make that smaller to make kind of a more form-fitting style so I think I think I might just do that because you know Klingon stuff is more militaristic so I'm gonna kind of make a line this way to where the inseam is where I'm gonna stitch the, uh, the crotch of the pant I guess and then the legs will be somewhat tighter fitting so so it kind of gives you a better kind of cut one of these is cut out then all you have to really do is transfer this this cut to another to the other part of your fabric and cut cut another piece out you know sort of mirror it So I have two pieces of fabric here representing the back of the outfit, the pant outfit. Um, the way to do the front, you know, is very similar to the back. You just take your, uh, whatever your, your pants you're going to use, and then um, you just kind of find the seam, you know, for the front also. And then, you know, cut that out the same way you did the back. and then. You know, pretty much stitch stitch it together, and the way you can tell, or the way that I do it anyways, is I just pull the regular pant out, inside out, and then see where the stitches go, sort of. This, this pant has pockets, you know, these shorts have pockets, which I'm also going to replicate because, uh, you know, I don't ever like to wear pants without pockets. I need, you know, pockets, so I'm going to do that. The original also. pocket here is pretty big, but... I'm going to make pockets that are somewhat smaller due to the amount of material I have. But yeah, as long as your hand can fit in there and you can uh, put stuff in here, um, you know, it should be alright. So I don't know, the kind of the way I'm going to do this is I have a material that's kind of folded over. That way I don't have to stitch here. I just have to stitch up here and, you know, kind of put it into the pant, sort of. So I'm going to make a stripe on the pants with this penny velvet, you know, kind of on the side. So the um, the cut for this is kind of a wider cut in the top of the pant, and it gets narrower, like more narrow, the more down the pant leg it goes. So I'm going to cut that out with this uh, piece of penny velvet here. So the way I made the shirt was that I took a vest here and then I cut it out, sort of, but I made the arms like a little bit more, um, less open, y you know, because uh, in battle I suppose you need armor going up up here, y you know, I guess that's just how, how the cut of the thing is. So to here, this is like kind of a, an armature or some sort of attachment that I can attach these strips to. So what I did was I sewed out a bunch of these strips, and these strips kind of go in a kind of a vertical fashion, I guess. Like, some go like this, sort of, you know, and then there's other strips, you know, that will go sort of on the top that are bigger. Let's see. Yeah, there, there's a lot that I cut out because, you know, like the fancier uniform, the strips are more narrow, but the... Uh, not so fancy ones. The strips are like much wider, like like this size. So you know, you, you just like lay out your pattern however however you want the pattern on the thing. And then I'm gonna kind of like uh, put a pattern on the top here. You know, just like how, how most of the, I guess the 
Klingon uniforms are and you know kind of build build this up sort of and you know once you have these strips you, you take these and you sew these on to to this cloth to to kind of make the uniform I, I'm sure that they do it differently like in, in the Star Trek universe but you know I live in Hawaii and it's hot so I just want like one layer and then like breathing so here it is kind of laid out so you know I'm just gonna like stitch this onto this fabric so yeah this is kind of a one of those shawls that I made out of a belt <laughs> So here it is, my costume in its full glory. I have the, uh, you know, the appliance here, and I have this uh, shawl and everything. And yeah, I'll take the uh, camera off here so you can kind of see. So, you know, I have this, uh, you know, the the uh, vinyl part and the shoes and everything, and then kind of the, uh, you know, the pants and then the gun to kind of uh, attack. Yeah, I don't have a bat lift, you know, uh, they, uh, they don't allow, like, edged weapons at the, uh, at the convention, so I can't, can't really use that. Maybe I can make one out of styrofoam or something. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, I was just over there, and it was, like, a blast. I had a blast at the convention. People there are, like, so, um, friendly and open and nice, and, uh, you know, I bought, I bought some stuff there, too, because you just can't go there and not buy something, so that's what I did also. I think the boots turned out, you know, fairly nice. I mean, all they really are, like, you know, leggings, kind of on top of, um, you know, a, kind of a lifted boot that were, you know, these boots were actually broken, as, as you recall. So here's kind of the embroidery on the back, sort of. It has, uh, you know, the Klingon sign, and then, like, up here, you know, for the back part, I've kind of uh, made this flap so that it's cooler because it's really hot and this vinyl suit gets real hot real quick so that's what I did to kind of you know make it make it a little cooler and you know try to make the spaces here bigger so that the heat can be released you know out of there okay so you have the shoes now yeah these yeah the shoes I, I kind of put newspaper in the shoe because you know one of the sides is kind of sagging so I kind of shoved newspaper to kind of like level it off you know, it's kind of like one of those old tricks that I used to do, shove newspaper, you know, when it's cold, so, so it'd be warmer. But anyways, you got the shoe, you have the leggings, you have the socks, you have the pants, and you have the uh, vest over there. Uh, the other accessories that I usually have, or, you know, you don't have to do this, kind of a holster for this Nerf gun, you know, because it's, it's safe, you know, and a uh, place to put the ammunition. And then also, like, every... Brave warrior also has to have a sash, you know, to put put their medals. Yeah, Cat, cats cats like to, to see what's happening. And like the other thing you can't forget is um, a Klingon headpiece. This one I bought online, and what I did was I kind of painted it a little bit, you know, uh, because it was kind of this color to begin with. This kind of, you know, I just painted it a little bit and then added these. Um, angry brows here like I glued them on with spirit gum but um yeah I'm gonna try to link this video as like a video response to another video of someone like making one of those headpieces so you could probably make your own headpiece and then make like the costume well I don't know maybe not it, it, it's kind of complicated so this is kind of a, a wider shot of how the uh, costuming is so you can kind of see the, the the legs and everything they they turned out okay you know, you can see the texture, and uh, I can move around okay in this thing. And um, this belt here, you know, it's actually an old cigarette case, so I can open it up and, you know, put, put the Klingon smokes in there or whatever, you know. I don't know. I, I guess if you wanted to do that. And yeah, the, the back and the sides turned out okay, I think. Yeah, and then there, there's some embroidery back here, like I have. I have like the Klingon emblem on the sash, and I have another one kind of in the back, I don't know. That's kind of how this project turned out, and yeah, all I have to say to that is, uh, kapla, success.
and also um yeah it's kind of hard this build you know i didn't really go through like a tutorial i more or less just showed you parts of the build so uh yeah that's it um thanks for watching and uh shout outs to all my buddies mr uh ovf mr uh avant -Giard, mr um anthony you know anthony han he, he was also at the convention you know had a blast i tell you uh, what a great place you know and you know everyone else garrick pakai and greg you know mr greg uh you sent me an email yeah anyways oh cuckoo clock i guess that means it's time for me to go well signing out uh kapla Okay, beat me out of here. Oh,